Welcome back to Mini Ocalypse. I'm Jamie. Today we'll be discussing painting miniatures on a budget and how I went about it. So just uh, a few things. We're going to be taking a step back. We're going to be using my original paints, my original brushes, and my original practice models, toys. They're still mini, minis. So hang in there and we'll get this started. Enjoy. We have our two dollar store mini skeletons here. We have our starting brushes, quite worn, but we're going to use them. So why not? Of course, we have our apple barrel paints. Yep, yep. Okay, so we're going to treat these. Uh, as if they were going to be a higher quality and this way you can understand a little bit about how I go through start to finish first thing is well we need to clean up the minis we have numerous miniature files here we use those have the exacto knife. So what we're going to be doing is, if you notice here, you're going to have mold lines, all that good stuff, blemishes, sometimes pre-painted, pre-primed. I mean, miniatures have globs and gloops all over them. Like uh, here's a little something there. If you get close enough, you can. Notice maybe there's some fine edges here under his arm in here If you can notice that so what we're going to do is take a minute here and Run through the quick process of this I'll Take my exacto knife here and I'll Get in there and I'll remove the majority of the lumps in the material these guys are kind of flexible not so easy on these guys, but we're just doing this for example. So we're gonna get the big spots away. And then for some of the smaller lines, we would use a, we call this a striking motion. Scraping motion. Yeah, scraping motion. I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, you know, and we're gonna try to remove some of those lines. And then we would go in some of our files and smooth them out so i'm going to take a minute here and we're going to fly through this and then we'll get to the next <laughs> Another good note is, say, if you wanted to add some definition, say, his teeth here, what you can do is go in and actually cut in to the model itself and kind of create a deeper groove, which is going to benefit you later, which we'll get into that. I'm not going to do it so much on these, but on a better model I would, I'd go in on these finger grooves and the teeth and anything I felt needed more defined. Um, say you wanted to do some damage, like this guy, oh, got him in the arm, man, oh no. What are we going to do there? We'll just go ahead and cut him a notch in his arm, and that notch is now there and will show up when we paint it. Another good note is, these guys here, if they don't have the lid on them, they're roundish, they'll roll, and uh, almost rolled off my desk, straight in my leg. So there's 
Here's a quick one too on prepping them up. The next step is priming. We'll get to that here in a moment. We have what here a piece of old broken wood. Prime on this wood. Get yourself something to spray paint on. Piece of wood, piece of plastic, piece of anything. Get you some masking tape here is what I use. Sometimes I use my tack because tape's apparently the, the bane of my existence. Okay, redo on that, there you go. Oh yeah, that's the sound of victory right there. What I'm gonna do is fold it over, stick it on both sides, stick that Not, not having the greatest luck right now. Boom. Anyways. So we'll do that. Another piece of fine tape. Put that on here like so. Boom, boom, boom. Get it on there. Take your miniature. Stick them right on there. Stick them there, push them down. He'll be all right. As long as it ain't too windy because we're going outside. It just snowed here. It's probably too cold, but I want to paint, so we're gonna prime. Here we go. I'll meet you outside. Kind of wet. Okay, as you can see, it's it's snowy out here. Good pair of boots too. Get your good pair of boots. All right. Oh boy, we got snowmobiles. Neighbors are on the snowmobiles. That's all right. We got to shake a thick paint can as it is. So today, yeah, get it, buddy. All right. Anyways, what I've been using is some Rust-Oleum primer, flat gray, just going gray, not doing any extra priming. I'll explain that to come. I'm going to pop the cap off here. We're going to get us some priming going on. Okay, so we're inside from the cold. I got my minis up against the heater vent. You know, drying. 
freezing cold out there. Cam says not to use it when it's that cold, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. So as I was uh, touched on just a moment ago is how I don't do any extra type of priming. Not yet anyways. I'm, I'm still, I'm still just starting out. So we have the flat gray. I find it works pretty good. I don't know if I could do black or pure white primer. There's a thing called Xenophil, Xenophil priming where you would cover the miniature in a darker primer and then use a lighter primer coming in with the spray of the direction of where the light source would be coming from or the areas you would want to be lighter because it all starts with the first couple coats. All the paints, even these apple barrel paints, are translucent and as you thin them down they become more translucent so be, by priming them different ways you can achieve your highlights and your shadows even I would say easier but much more defined as well so you save yourself a lot of time by just taking the patience and doing things step by step and just get yourself to the final product and it'll be it'll be worth it. I, I've only painted a couple miniatures so far and I've skipped steps in some of the ones I've painted before and I've regretted it. And here we go. The first thing we're gonna do is a base coat. Since I want these shadows to be darker, the ribs and all the good stuff. We're gonna start with our brown oxide. We're just gonna get a nice layer on them. Down there. We're not even gonna bother thinning this stuff down. The wet palette will take care of that somewhat. And we're just gonna I'm gonna keep the brush moving. Get the paint on there. Not being too terribly careful. Keep in mind, we're not using the best brushes or the best paint. Apple Barrel Paint is a craft paint. Picked them up at Walmart for 50 cents a piece. Of that that will happen. So just come in with the dry brush, clean it off a little, dab it off, dry off the brush, come back into the paint, do it again. amount of time cleaning them up it was just an example we're just gonna get through this so you viewers can see where I began and how I did it on a budget now the more time you take the better it's gonna turn out really uh I don't think it would matter what painter brushes you're using if you have patience don't get me wrong, there, there is a difference in the quality. But it all comes down to skill at the end of the day. That's something I believe in. So, 
We're just gonna get a base coat on them. Pop this guy off. Now ideally what you want to do is do thin coats multiple times. Try to use a rule of three. Do this once, let it dry, do it again, let it dry, do it again, let it dry. So we're gonna take a moment here, stop the video and I'll get these guys going. What we're gonna do is grab us a little finer brush here, probably not necessary. You wanna use the biggest brush possible so you're not going back forth to the palette over and over again, but for now this will work. So, see here we got, he's got an ax, it's got a handle. That's about all he's got on him really. So, I would like the pits of the ax to be darker than the top surface of the metal on the ax. So we're gonna go in and color block that with our jet black. This is another problem you're gonna come across with craft paints. They will not lay the best and you'll find yourself repeatedly going back to the palette. You don't wanna load the brush up to the furl here. That'll end up in the long run destroying your brushes fairly quickly, honestly. As you can see, these have been through some torture. Uh, let's just uh, let's just go ahead and switch back to our bigger brush here. Look out! Look how much boom done. Pop here a little. That's just just gonna lay a nice black coat on those pits. And if your paints are thin enough, it won't muddle up the details too bad. So we'll go in on this guy and we'll do the same. What I do is I go through after a base coat, I'll do some color blocking just to help guide for myself what's going away, what I want to be darker, what I want to be lighter. I want to keep in mind in your head where the light's coming from, where your light source is, and paint accordingly from lighter to darker. I'm gonna let them dry, and then we're going to explore making a wash and talking about that a little bit. Okay, so we're going to make a wash pick these up at the Dollar Tree for one dollar. Little palette here to start with. What we're gonna do is I want to wash them with the black to get the recesses a darker color than the surfaces. So we got our black and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix water We're gonna add some black to the water. So what happens here is the water thins the paint down, as you can see. Thins it down. And what that's gonna allow it to do is it's gonna dip into the recesses and when it dries, the pigments will stay in the recesses and the water will dry up and it'll leave the darker areas in the recesses. It's still going to add a shade Imagine it as like a color filter over your, in, wherever you cover it at. So not to be worried, you go back in and you clean it up. That's part of the process is what I find really fun. So here we go. We're gonna load up the brush and we're just gonna get this on them. As you can see there, it's hitting the recesses and kind of staying off of the surfaces as we go. You want to keep your brush strokes moving 
in the direction where you want the paint to apply. And the last point of your brush where you stop your stroke is going to be where the most paint is applied. So I'm just gonna get him with a quick wash, pull out them finer details with it, and we'll see what we really have going on here in a few moments. That's not too bad, we got a little too much there. While it's still wet, you can dab your brush and come in and soak it right up off there. But you wanna be careful, especially with these apple barrels, it will literally pull it right up out and you'll find yourself going back in. So as you can see there, just immediately with a wash, we've increased the quality of this little dollar toy quite a lot. I'm going to pop him off, and we'll do it to the next one. Just going real quick here, nothing precise, just keeping it simple, explaining it as I go. Hit him with the wash, hit him with the wash. Going top down, keeping, keeping our brush strokes in the direction we want them. And in our strokes where we want the most color, we ended up building it on top. As you can see, this guy has a hole in his head, but hell, what do you want? It's a dollar toy. Not too bad, actually, for practicing, I say. I do have a handful of these packs left. Maybe I'll paint them. Maybe I'll do a giveaway someday on them or donate them to a cause or take them to my local game shop after they're painted and let the guys have hordes of skeletons and mummies to wreak havoc amongst their players. Once again, pretty simple, pretty quick, pretty effective, just like that. Boom. Let this dry and then we'll come back in here. Okay, so while those are drying, I'm gonna take a minute to just chat with you guys for a few. Like I said, we got these apple barrel paints at Walmart for 50 cents a piece. I had these brushes laying around. Some of them were my fiance's. She gave me a ribbing on the first episode for not mentioning it. So, there they are, babe. And I was able to come up with my own wet palette. And so I saved money along the way. I took these $1 for 10 minis show them again as you can see got them at the dollar store during Halloween time amazed me so the goal is by the end of it to have these one dollar minis call it a ten cent mini we've applied some small amounts of fifty cent paints so we got a penny or two in that on paint and brushes that we already own. Or you can go pick some up for a buck at the same stores. And in the end, we'll have taken what is technically a 10 cent mini, and maybe it will look more like a $5 mini. Can't beat that, not in my opinion. So I'm explaining the simplest steps that I used. I started with just the basic step, one, two, three. You know, we had our prep and our prime. I'm not counting those in the painting process. Then we have our base coat, our color blocking, and our, oh no, I forgot what I was gonna say. Our wash, ha! <laughs> that happened, had our wash. So, we were able to get something Kind of decent here. It's not focusing on him, but that was quick. It took me maybe five minutes if I really rushed it. Ten minutes max. And he was already about battle ready. We're going to explore the last of my third step here is dry brushing. This did take me a minute to figure out. I'll explain it the best I can. So... Once these guys are dry, we'll explore that. 
you'll get to see a little bit of dry brushing and that'll be that. Now we'll get started on dry brushing. This is the brush that I use. It's kind of crusty, a little stiff, a little frayed out. I've even uh, nipped it with the old scissors and flattened it some. I did, once again, picked up at the Dollar Tree. Some nice makeup brushes here. Nice and soft. We'll try those out in a later video. As you can see, they're cruelty-free, gluten-free, and vegan. What do you know? All right, so back to what we're doing here. So, dry brushing. Keep the brush, brush dry. Dab it in your paint a little. Get a little paint on there. And you're going to clean most of the paint off. Almost, almost all of it. What I do is I test it out on my hand here. So let's just barely, there we go, it's just barely, barely coming off there. We're gonna take our mini, we wanna keep the strokes going, same direction, try not to pass over the same area more than say three times or it'll start to tear the paint, so you let it dry, then you can go back in and do it again. Don't keep fighting it. So let's just dive in here. The color we're using is Antique White. I find it offers a pretty good skeleton color. As you can see here, it's just hitting the raised areas and leaving those recessed areas alone. May have to do this a couple times. I may have to go in with another wash. These are the problems you run into with using the lower quality craft paints. Uh, you gotta take a lot more time with it to be able to look quality. Today we're not worrying so much about that, more as just giving you an example of how I started it these exact three steps. You want to make sure you're brushing the direction. Say if I went that way, it would, uh, the bristles would have got right in there and well those up. You see, goes on, really starts to pop out them details. They were popping before, look at them popping now. too much there. Get some of that off on the old hand. I could probably be going a lot neater. I'm a bit nervous right now. Yeah, just, just showing you the basics of how I started. I'm not saying you have to follow these or if these are definite things. This is I went about getting them ready for what I would call battle ready, ready to put on the table and play. Don't have to hit the undersides so much because ideally, you know, he's the light's coming from the top down. And uh, so naturally underneath would be darker, you know. One. Picking up a little speed here. Trying to maintain, paying attention to the directions I should be going. Got a little out of shot there, you know. Don't, don't worry about getting it on other parts. Those are, you know, if it's gonna happen, the more careful you are, the less it will happen, obviously. Watch this here with his face. We're really gonna bring this face out. You really get to see quite a bit of detail. 
packed into this 10 cent model. And this is the feller with the hole in his head. He's like a, let's call him a mini piggy bank, huh? Put, like, put your little miniature gold coins in there. So, that didn't take too very long to not really even be too careful and get in there. Oh, God, got me some paint up here and it, see the paint left up here. I went too hard and drug a nice bright spot out there. Try to feather it out, but it's most likely not gonna happen with these here apple barrel paints. They do work, as you can see. Look at what we've got here. We got us a old dirty skeleton darn near ready for some battlefield. So we'll take a moment here, take my time, go in, we'll get this guy going, and then we'll start in, let's, well, let's go ahead and start in with the weapon now. While we're at it. Got my dry brush wet. It's because I don't really have a backup. But that'll be alright. It's going to be okay with these apple barrel paints. They, they dry kind of chalky. Got a real chalky look. Chalky texture. Once they're clear coated, they ain't too bad as you've seen in the previous video. I find that the chalkiness kind of really helps with the bone skeleton look so far. When we get into some other options, we'll see, but we're going to come in here on the palette. We're going to get us a little bit of pewter gray. Way too much water going on here. Let's, let's get that out of there. You'll, you'll find your technique as you go. I imagine everyone has a slightly different approach to it. That's, that's part of life. You learn as you go, you take from it what works for you, and you apply it to your skill set. Let's see here. Here we go. Got the water removed, we got a little bit of paint, dab it off, thin it out. We'll come in on here. Let's get this camera to focus. It's kind of awkward painting like this. And then I'll get used to it. As I said, I'm filming this on an iPhone that is currently strapped to a flexible lamp and pointing down for the top down angle. I work with what I got. And we're doing it. We're gonna see where this can take us. Mm. Too much water still in the brush, so now you get to see uh, how mistakes are made. Why not? I'm not claiming to be a professional, but I am aspiring to be. If you don't learn from your mistakes, then I feel you really aren't trying to learn it at all. Because you can't be perfect. Not everybody can be perfect. Some people are skilled and gifted. Some people aren't. There's some things that are for you, some things that aren't. But I do believe if you apply yourself, you can learn. So as you see, dry brush sitting gray really brought those darker pits out. And just very quickly, we got a little something going on. Not too bad. Quick example of how all that works. All right. So we're gonna cut away here, put in some time on these two guys, and we'll show you what the final product looks like. Okay, so real quick while we're letting those guys dry up a little, as you notice, I just did that real quick, real haphazard, was just demonstrating the technique, 
how I went about doing it. It doesn't show any of my skill, what skill I may or may not have. We're learning that as we go, and hopefully you learned something as well. If you did, please post down in the comments. If you like this, enjoy this, please subscribe. So we'll get down here, back at the table, and uh, show you what we have going on here. Whoa, hey, Elf, what are you doing here, man? Get, get out of here. Get him out of here. All right. And the stars are, boom, skeleton one, skeleton two. So as you can see here, let me find something to point with. Did a real haphazard. Got some clumps here. Got stuff all over his handle on his scythe there. Ain't got the the greatest detail going on the weapons. And that's my fault. But patience and take your time and you won't have that. We got some missed areas where I didn't go in the finest, but just things to look for, you know. The uh the details. It's all in the details. So there's a quick example of the three steps that I took in my approach to attempting to paint some of my first small scale miniatures. In this case, I started with some dollar toys. So ideally what we would do is we would get us some more of our brown, we'd go in and clean this up, clean this up, we maybe apply another wash recheck those recesses and then possibly go in for uh, another dry brushing depending on how that all turned out the limits are limitless it's up to you how far you want to go and how much time you want to put into it I recommend attacking every project with as much possible time as you have and making a quality figure you already bought them you have the paints why not make something nice so, we're going to go ahead, do some cleanup on them, and throw it up on the time lapse. Okay, so, I was in the middle of painting these guys, getting them ready to do the time lapse, and get a knock on my door. A co-worker of mine shows up, and he brings me this. A tube of oh, fantasy creatures by Wicked Duels. Picked this up on uh, Amazon, I guess. And brought it to me as a gift. That's 98 miniatures. That's what I call a mini-ocalypse. Thanks, Tony. Love you, brother. <laughs> my quick rundown of how I started painting miniatures what I did to get myself in the hobby and miniatures have quite literally grabbed me by the goatee and sucked me in so I hope you look forward to watching the next video if you enjoyed this please like please subscribe and thank you for your time this was once again another episode of miniocalypse